This conference will now be recorded. Hello students, now we are moving to the new chapter. Uh, chapter number 15, Plan, Growth and Development. So in this chapter, for NEET exam, we have to learn the plan, growth and development, uh, seed germination, then the phases of plan growth and uh, plan growth rate, conditions of growth, uh, then differentiation, de-differentiation and re-differentiation, then the sequence of developmental process in a plant cell, growth regulators, the growth reg uh, regulators, in that you have to learn auxin, gibberellin, cytokine, ethylene, and abscisic acid. All these you are going to learn. So here you won't get any indirect question. Almost all the questions will be the indirect form only, but you have to learn thoroughly what is the role of all these growth regulators and how it works. Okay, so here this is comparatively one easier chapter. Uh, you won't get confused here. Uh, so let's start with the uh, topics. So first about plant growth we need to learn. About plant growth. If you're saying about plant growth, this growth, how we can define this growth? This growth can be defined as an irreversible process, right? It's irreversible. It's irreversible and that's permanent. It's a permanent increase in the size of body. in body size or the parts of body or the organs of body, uh, even we can say an individual cell, right? So this is accompanied by, along with this increase in the size, it is accompanied by metabolic processes. These growth, that is accompanied by metabolic processes, right? So all these metabolic processes that can occur at the expense of energy. So there is an ex energy expense for this metabolic processes. So plant, in the case of plant, we can say plant growth is unique because plants retain their capacity for unlimited growth. They have the capacity for unlimited growth throughout their life. In the case of plants, we can say their growth is unlimited throughout their life. Okay, throughout their life, their life is unlimited. Their growth is unlimited. That's what we can say about plants, right? And the ability of plants, of this unlimited growth or plant growth, we said that is very unique because plants retain the capacity for unlimited growth throughout their life. And this ability, this unlimited growth ability of plants, that is due to the presence of meristems at certain uh, places or certain locations of their body, right? That is due to the, this unlimited growth is due to the is unlimited
growth this is due to the presence of meristems so in their body throughout their body they have meristems in certain places not in all the places we can see there in certain locations of their body they can see they have the presence of meristems so that's why they have unlimited growth throughout their life so growth growth in plants that we can measure by increase in the fresh weight dry weight uh, length their length may increase their area may increase that volume and cell number may increase or their weight dry weight everything will increase so because of that we can all these by checking all these things we can make sure that the plant is growing clear and here we need to see about types of growth curves types of growth curves okay types of growth curves we need to say see how this growth curve we will place by plotting the size or weight of an organism or weight of an organism against time against time that's how we need to plot the uh, growth curve okay so this growth curve we will get by plotting the size or weight of the organism against the time that's how we will get the growth curve and on the basis of their shape basis of their shape these growth curves that can be of j shaped curve j shaped curve or s shaped curve and we can say one more type that is s shaped curve okay so two types of curve on the basis of their shapes we can get two types of curve j shaped curve and s shaped curve so uh, through these curves through the shape curves we can see that these two shape may get j shape or s shape so do, based on these curves the pattern of growth in an organism we can trace out so to trace out the growth of an organism we can uh, do this growth curve that means size or weight of the organism against the time we can plot and on the basis of their shape we will get two types it may be j shape curve or s shape curve so that makes through these uh, shapes of this curve we can make out the pattern of growth in an organism okay so these curves shows the pattern of growth of an organism okay so how we will plot this j shape or s shape curve j shape curve the j shape curve this is also called as geometric growth curve j shape curve is called as geometric growth curve okay so in geometric growth curve in this type of growth that progeny that retains the ability to divide okay in geometric growth curve progeny is having ability to divide and that will continue like that so the progeny retain the ability to divide and that will continue to do so okay so this type of growth curve is shown by plants and unis higher plants and unicellular organism this you can see in higher plants and unicellular organisms which one j shape curve j shape curve okay so geometric growth curve it is called as geometric growth curve and the progeny will be having the ability to divide and it will redivide it will show that ability to divide and it will continue the life right so higher plants and unicellular organisms they are showing this j shaped curve okay
Then what about S shaped? S shaped curve. This is also called as sigmoid growth curve. Also called as sigmoid growth curve. Which one? S shaped curve. So this sigmoid growth curve or S shaped growth curve that is a typical growth curve. In most of the organ organisms, you can see this type of growth curve. This is the typical growth curve in almost all the organisms because they are in the natural habitat so those can show the typical growth curve so this type of organisms will be having sigmoid growth curve so this is divided into four phases the sigmoid growth curve this is divided into four phases which are the four phases lag phase log phase phase of diminishing diminishing growth and stationary phase so which are the four phases lag phase log phase then phase of diminishing growth and stationary phase okay lag phase is there log phase is there phase of diminishing growth is there stationary phase is there so these are the phases of the sigmoid growth curve okay So let's see in detail about the sigmoid growth curve. So sigmoid growth curve in that phases of growth. See the sigmoid growth curve that can be categorized into four distinct phases we have already told, right? So these growth phases and their details we need to learn because from that you will get questions. Okay, so first one is lag phase. Okay, so the lag phase, in this lag phase, uh, this is a slow phase. It's a slow phase because here the growth is continuously increasing. Growth increases continuously okay and here for example we can say root apex growth shoot apex see from this all these four questions were there for previous exams okay so it's a uh, in each and every point you may get as a question see root apex growth shoot apex growth that and all shows the uh, lag phase and here it, it's a slow phase and growth increases continuously all these points you may get as a question so growth is slow growth is continuously increasing and root apex growth of root apex and shoot apex region that you can see there is a lag phase okay next we need to say about the growth rate. Growth rate that is uh, defined as the increased growth per unit time. Growth rate means the definition is increased growth per unit time. That is the growth rate. So the growth rate shows an increase. That may be uh, this increased growth. There is a growth increase and this growth rate, this growth rate, whatever we said, which is increasing, that growth rate shows an increase. 
that shows increase and this increase may be arithmetic or geometrical it may be geometrical or arithmetic okay here arithmetic growth we said this arithmetic growth in arithmetic growth pattern after mitotic cell division see first we need to say about mitotic cell division right cell division should happen so after this mitotic cell division only one cell continues to divide from this only one cell continues to divide so here division one cell is dividing continuously and the other cell that will differentiate and that will mature what about the other cell other cells will differentiate for different functions and that will become mature okay here one cell will undergo continuous division and the other cell will differentiate and that will become mature that is the arithmetic growth okay uh, here example we can say that uh, constantly elongating roots the roots which are constantly elongating that we can say we can see their arithmetic growth and here the mathematical representation this arithmetic growth that can be represented mathematically mathematical representation of this arithmetic growth we can say lt is equal to l0 plus rt okay lt means length at time t length at time t at time t what is the length that is lt okay and l0 l0 is the initial length initial length at the starting stage what is the length that is l0 okay then r r is the growth rate and t is the time clear so this is the arithmetic growth next comes the geometrical growth geometrical growth here the geometrical growth here both the progeny cells uh, resulted after mitosis that will continue to divide here in the arithmetic division what is happening one cell is continuously dividing and other cells are differentiating and they are performing functions in the geometrical growth both the progeny cells after mitosis first mitosis is happening it is producing two cells so both the cells continue to divide both will continue in division stage okay so with limited nutrient supply the growth see growth will happen these cells again two cells will become four cells four cells will become eight cells like that it will work right so it is continuously using nutrients nutrients are used continuously and whenever it is using the nutrient quantity is getting reduced so there will be with a limited nutrient the growth slows down and that will become stationary nutrient availability will become less because number of cells are increasing 
many cells so what will happen growth slows down growth slows down and finally it will become stationary right here the geometric growth geometrical growth how we can represent the geometrical growth geometrical growth that can be represented as w1 is equal to w0 e raised to rt okay here w1 this is the final size final size in the sense we can say height number weight it may be particular height particular number or weight anything okay and w0 that is the initial size okay r r we said that is the growth rate then t is the time of growth and what about e that is the base of natural logarithms okay so this is the representation of the geometrical growth and now arithmetic growth and geometrical growth we have explained next we need to learn the conditions of growth okay so here you may get this question and next we need to learn about conditions of growth so we are not learning everything from the this chapter just previous 10 year question papers what and all questions they have asked based on that only those topics here we are learning minimum you have to learn this okay so the conditions of growth the essential requirements of growth in plants that is water what and all essential things should be there for the growth of plants water should be there oxygen should be there then nutrients uh, temperature then light all these things all these are the conditions of growth okay then here nutrients let's see one by one water how water helps this water helps to maintain the turgidity of cells turgidity of cells and that also provides the medium for enzymatic activities which is needed for the growth and this works as medium for enzymatic activity so that is the role of water okay next about nutrients what and all nutrients will do see this nutrients we know that plants require nutrients for their synthesis of protoplasm and that will act as a source of energy all the nutrients are the sources of energy right and it is required for these plants for the synthesis of protoplasm right then temperature what is the role the temperature is having so temperature range above the optimum for plant growth that may damage the protoplasm or that may denature the enzyme here protoplasm enzyme all are having role so temperature how the temperature will affect the above optimum temperature see for growth 
one particular temperature the growth will be maximum above that optimum that is a maximum level so above that maximum level when the temperature is going means that will badly affect the protoplasm then the uh, enzymatic activity that may denature the enzyme so overall it is affecting the growth of that plant or the growth condition it is completely making it down right because it is damaging the protoplasm and the enzyme next comes the oxygen so we know that oxygen is essential for aerobic respiration so the availability of energy for biosynthetic activity depends upon oxygen so for aerobic respiration oxygen is must right it is very essential so depending upon that activity the whole plant activity is there right so essential for aerobic respiration so aerobic respiration is very much important and the availability of energy for biosynthetic activity that depends upon oxygen then we said light and gravity so this light and gravity that also affects some stages of growth light and gravity in certain stages of light, uh, growth this light and gravity also affect the uh, phases some stages or phases of the growth okay next we need to learn so here these conditions of growth this as 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 they have asked in two three question papers like the conditions of growth and what role is uh, nutrients are having then the uh, water and uh, temperature above optimum temperature if it is going means how it will be uh, how it is affecting the growth like that under question scheme okay next differentiation de differentiation and re differentiation re differentiation okay so here differentiation means that is the qualitative change in which one in size change in size and that change will be the qualitative change and its permanent change uh then that may change the size biochemistry structure then the function of cells tissues organs and all so for example we can say in plants this palisite parenchyma trachytes guard cells root cap fiber uh, trichom all these are differentiated cells in plants okay in the case of that we can say this is the change in size and there is a permanent change in size structure biochemistry then the function in the functioning of cell uh, tissue organ and all so examples this example is very much important that means in the case of plants the root cap then the fiber trachytes parenchyma palisite parenchyma trichomes all these are differentiated cells what about de differentiation what we can say so in de differentiation in the process of de specialization of this differentiated cells uh, that means they are gaining or they are regaining the capacity to divide and form new cells de specialization of the differentiated cells 
okay and they are getting or they are regaining the capacity to divide and they are forming the and that's how they are forming new cells clear see here the formation of meristems then interfascicular vascular cambium core cambium all these are d differentiated so here you may get this examples as the questions okay this several times these questions have come uh, core cambium is there interfascicular vascular cambium all these are the d differentiated cells next redifferentiation in redifferentiation what we can say that means the structural change and uh, physiological specialization or the chemical specialization of cells which is being derived from the d differentiated meristematic cells okay so example we can say uh, the secondary phloem formation of secondary phloem then secondary xylem secondary xylem secondary phloem then cork cell then secondary cortex all these are the examples for re differentiation so first differentiation then d differentiation then re differentiation all these terms you have to learn with the examples okay so don't get confused first differentiating then d differentiation again differentiating then re differentiation okay next the sequence of development process in plant cell development process in plant cell the sequence of development process in plant cell actually the development that includes all the changes that an organism goes through during their life cycle so from germination of the seed to the senescence germination of seed to senescence of seed through during this period it will go through several stages so all these changes which are taking place in that organism or in the plant from the germination to the senescence stage through their uh, life stages or through the life cycle through what and all stages it is going all these development includes that is included in that development okay all these are included in the development that means all the changes which an organism goes through during their life cycle from the period of germination to the senescence stage okay so the sequence of process which is making this development of a cell that sequence that we need to learn meristematic cell
right? From that, it will undergo growth and it will form new cell. So expansion. Then these cells will differentiate. It will undergo maturation. Then this mature cell again, it will die. Senescence, it will undergo senescence and it will go for death. Right. So the sequence of the developmental process in a plant cell that in this way. So these are the steps. So it may change in the option like slightly some, with some other words, but these steps should be there. Metastomatic cell, then from that a new cell. Metastomatic means it will be in a stage of division. So from that new cells will form and this will undergo enlargement. Then it will undergo maturation. Then it is going to death. Right. So this is a sequence. So metastomatic cell to new cell means that is a cell division. This is cell division stage. Right. And new cell to enlargement. This is expansion. Right. And enlargement to maturation. That is differentiation. Right. And mature cell will undergo death. That stage that is the. Senescent stage. Right. So plants follow different pathways in response to the environment or in different phases of life. They will follow different pathways. And they form different kinds of structures also. So this is called as plasticity. So plasticity is one question. Sorry. So plasticity, we can say. Plants will follow so many pathways according to the changes or in the phases of their environment or the life cycle changes from different kinds of and they will form different types of structures to undergo or to um, overcome that change in the situation, right? They will form different kinds of structures, different types of structures they will form. And this is called as the plasticity. So heterophily in cotton, coriander and larkspur, all these are the, this condition, plasticity, example for plasticity. Okay, example for plasticity, this is a repeated question. Heterophily in cotton. Then second example is coriander. Heterophily in coriander and in larkspur also. This heterophily is there. Clear? These are the main stages. What and all the in a quick review, all the old question papers, previous year, 10 years question paper. From this, all the questions I have taken, and these are the topics which are covered in that questions. So, in this chapter, the remaining topics which we need to learn, they are plant growth regulators. About plant growth regulators, we need to learn like uh, auxin, gibberlin, uh, then cytokinin, ethylene, abscisic acid. About all these, we need to learn different hormones and their locations, their physiological effects, all the uses, everything we need to learn. Okay, then about photoperiodism, seed dormancy, seed germination, vernalization, all these things we need to learn. Okay, so here
next topic which we need to learn is c dormancy this was one question one repeated question c dormancy means that's the inactive state of a seed the seed will become inactive state in inactive state that seed will be and this inactive state that will be caused by the impermeability of seed coat this may be due to several reasons maybe this inactive stage that stage may be due to impermeability of seed coat or it may be having mechanical resistance or may be having chemical substances due to chemical substances because of all these reasons that seed may be in an inactive stage and that allows the storage of seeds in viable condition so storage in viable condition that we can do and different methods are employed in breaking this dormancy stage um, uh, they are the hydrolytic enzymes so this dormancy stage we need to break so for that methods are there that is hydrolytic enzymes then stratification scarification growth hormones all these we can give for breaking this seed dormancy okay so this is the seed dormancy next we need to learn about seed germination seed germination means activation and growth activation of that seed and growth of that seed that means growth of that seed in the sense the embryo which is present in the seedling embryo which is present so that seedling the embryo which is present in the seedling that is getting activated and it is growing in a favorable condition so three types of seed germinations are there seed germinations are of three types one is epigeal second type is hypogeal and third one is viviparous okay epigeal we can see here the cotyledons that are pushed above the ground cotyledons they are pushed above the ground about the uh, ground this cotyledons will get pushed and uh, how it will get pushed up the 
hypocotyl elongation rapid hypocotyl elongation will be there rapid elongation of hypocotyl by that this cotyledons will come above the ground okay and next comes the uh, here example we can say uh, bean castor all these are sto showing epigeal uh, seed germination then what about the hypogeal seed germination hypogeal means the cotyledons will remain inside the soil cotyledons remain inside the soil okay it will be inside the soil only example we can say uh, most of the monocots they will show hypogeal germination that means lay, uh, maize rice all these rice maize all these will show uh, hypogeal seed germination and the third one we said that is vv paris so vv paris seed germination that occurs inside the fruit inside the fruit that means inside the fruit uh, still attached to the parent plant it will be attached to the parent plant so seed germination occurs inside the fruit still it will be attached to the parent plant so example we can say mangroves agave all these are showing vv paris seed germination okay so here you need to learn this what is seed germination there are three types of seed germination and what is happening in epigeal seed germination what is there in hypogeal and what is in vv para seed germination and examples for each one you need to learn okay so that you will get the answer for six previous year questions okay examples also you have to learn you have to learn it examples are also very important and repeatedly came for four years okay so in the next class we will be learning the remaining topics like about plant growth regulators we will learn and uh, photoperiodism these are the topics which we need to uh, learn in the next class okay thank you